righty deep stretch of Vikings game plan. It's time for the winning formula from the TCO studios. The winning formula tandem, Pete Bursich, analyst, Vikings Radio Network, Ron Johnson, former Gopher great wide receiver. We say that because of how hot the Gophers are and Vikings game day live on Fox 9. Speaking of hot, Dalvin Cook, NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Ron, Dalvin is on fire. Yeah, and the good thing about Dalvin, I think, that helps this team is that he can be on the field for all three downs. He's willing to block in the pass game. You see him pick up some big blitzes. You see him catch some balls downfield, but also screen game. But then when he gets a chance to run with the ball in his hand, he is unique. He is dynamic. He puts his foot in the ground, and he's done something through 10 games that Adrian Peterson didn't even do in his 2,000-plus yard season. So Dalvin Cook right now is up for the MVP conversation, no doubt. Now, Peter, you played with Robert Smith. You've called games that include included Adrian Peterson and now Dalvin Cook. So I'm not asking you to compare this guy who leads the NFL in rushing yards, second in rushing TDs. How about that? 40 receptions, yeah. second behind Diggs. But like, where does he stack up for what you've seen or, or with whom you've played? Well, I, I think of, of all the running backs that I either played with or while I was here when I was coaching or, you know, in my years in the booth, he is the most versatile of all the running backs that we've seen. You know, Ron mentions him being able to play on all three downs. We haven't always had that. But when you go to a team and play against a team, you want to go the path of least resistance. And you look at this, you know, Dallas front group and how well they were against the run, how well they rushed the passer. So what did we do? We screened them. We got Dalvin out into the flat in space, get him one on one with somebody, make somebody miss, let him get to the second level, sprinkle in some off tackle runs along the way. And and he puts together an unbelievable evening. So it's the versatility, I think, that makes him elite. And in the ultimate team game, you, you need everybody just to get one play to work. So we talk about Dalvin, who's getting a lot of accolades. The quarterback was terrific at Dallas. Kyle Rudolph, in my opinion, is having the best overall season of his career. Three touchdowns in the last two games. But Ron, his blocking, his awareness of everything, and of course he can catch. Yeah, and, and the one thing about Rudy is he he's embraced this role. So he hasn't been a guy that's going to say, look at me, I need the ball. He's embraced the fact that this is a run first team at times. He's also embraced the fact that in the red zone, he gets overlooked. But with Adam Thielen being out, I think we saw what this team can be when Adam's back. Rudy is an elite target. Yep. He's humongous. And I mean, the catch with one hand, that is something that like, I think 99% of the NFL players would have dropped that ball, let alone get two feet in. Right. And so that is what makes Rudy so good. I think, Paul, I agree with you on, on the touchdown reception side. He's still he's doing really well on that. Early in the season, though, didn't have a ton of receptions. What's changed? I think he's having his most complete season. Yeah. I do agree with you on the run blocking side that he is working very, very hard and getting better and better at the zone schemes, the block downs, the pulls, those kinds of things. He's become a more complete tight end, I think, this year. And, and hold that picture right there. If you see that picture, you would think it was an after touchdown celebration <laughs> where like he's dropping the ball to a fan. No, that was the catch. That, 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 that's the catch. It was unbelievable, Ron. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, watching it at home, just as when they, re they replayed it probably eight times because they wanted to make sure his feet got in, but it did not move. A lot of times, one-handed catches, guys have to bring that second hand up to make the catch. He caught it with one hand, it stuck, and then he looked down at his feet and toe-tapped it. Yeah. That's how comfortable he is and how big his mitts are. <laughs> Somebody said it looked like the hamburger helper glove. Yeah, right. I mean, so that's the kind of guy that Kirk Cousins feels comfortable saying, hey, I'm going to just throw it up. I'm going to let the big boy, you know, make a play for me. And, and last one on Kyle, 75 consecutive games started. He's reliable. Like Pete always has said, either player, playing or coaching, you can't make the club in the tub, and you can count on Kyle Rudolph. You can also count on D-line dominance from the Minnesota Vikings. No Linval Joseph to some, amazingly, no problem. Ezekiel Elliott, on 20 carries, he had 2.35 yards per carry, lowest of his career when carrying it at least 20 times. His long in the game, Ron, six yards. Yeah, Ezekiel Elliott, if you look at the first play there, I mean, the defense swarmed. First guy missed, second guy was there, Everson Griffin, Daniil Hunter. You look at the last drive to stop Zeke Elliott in the backfield, I mean, between Armin Watts and Afadio Denable. I mean, you plug and play these guys, and I think that's what the coaches wanted. Was we we want to go with seven D linemen if we can, and we're going to get these guys rest. I think that was a big test to show 
if Linval needs to take a breather and go yep. over there and grab some oxygen, we have guys that can play. And so this team is in the stretch of one, you beat a Denver team, and then you head into the bye week and you get all these guys back. Wow. So that's the key to this team is one, like you said, you can't make the club in the tub. Yep. You can't make plays either. Yep. So now you're seeing these younger guys get a chance. And then when they get Limbaugh back, I mean, that's going to be scary. Mm -mm. You look at the numbers, and normally it's kind of flipped where we're always – we've been in the top in the, in the past defense category, maybe a little softer on the run by design. I think what we saw by design against Dallas was a much more aggressive front seven, a lot more blitzing, a lot more kind of gap control, linebackers downhill. And the guys that didn't have a chance to play, they filled in, they filled in beautifully. The, the D linemen – one of the things I love, I always say, look at the draft. Look where all of our D linemen were drafted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing top five, top ten picks across the board. These guys have been developed. They know the system. The coaches know what kind of players they want in that system. You get guys like Afadi Odenabo yeah. all the time who come out of almost obscurity and end up contributing, not just contributing, but playing really, really good football on the national stage. Yeah, the one thing I want to say to that, that was a perfect point to seven guys in the box. I think Mike Zimmer had in his mind DBs, I can't help you this game. We have to stop the run. You noticed a lot of man coverage, but you also noticed Xavier Rhodes stayed on his side. Yeah. Mike Hughes had a okay start, but had a great finish to that game. If they can do that down the stretch where they can put more guys in the box and these guys can really man and stay on their side, don't waste the energy running back and forth. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be tough for Seattle to be able to beat them doing what they did like, or against the Cowboys. Let's, uh, let's beat the Broncos, move into the bye on a positive vibe. For Pete and Ron and everybody at the VEN, I'm Paul Allen. Thanks for watching.